All YouTubers, Sam and I are back again to continue to complete the other half of uh, building an end-to-end uh, uh, OData Neo, uh, a reimagined library to allow people to kind of convert, you know, their statements, raw statements and OData protocol into uh, SQL expressions, SQL statements, uh, Lambda expressions, expression trees, or even GraphQL. Uh, statements and in the last time Sam and I basically we were you know trying to kind of do a POC a quick POC that Sam and I had to rebuild together before this session because I didn't save the project but you know what we were basically doing is you know to show how to take a raw statement like a select statement you know and kind of turn it into a lambda expression this lambda expression is what opens up the doors to passing it to the entity framework, passing it to an any I enumerable or I queryable to be able to apply these filters straight to uh, uh, any collection in, in the .NET world. And, you know, as usual, I'm joined here by my dear friend, Sam. How are you, Sam? Hi. Hey. So, so Sam, let, just to bring people back into focus, you know, you and I just kind of put together this real quick before we start our session. And um, the just to bring everyone back in focus, what Sam, you know, kind of helped me do is basically build this convert to expression function. And let me kind of zoom in everything so people can see what we're doing. And we were exploring the age option, but I'm going to comment all of these for now just to kind of help people see where the focus is. So all of this comment, all of this. We basically went and said, here's a, a property. So we know the property name. And then we build a parameter expression out of the type. And the type will be represented by this dollar sign it, right? This can be anything you want. But it's Sam, just for debugging. It's just for, just, just for debugging, right? Debug so, information. So if you want to debug the expression, and it will show the, the name, the, the string in your debug string. So you can understand the uh logic understand as a expression you build absolutely and then there is the member expression you know which basically takes in this parameter expression and then the select property so it's basically concatenating it's pointing out at the property in in that expression right and it basically is going and saying in here i don't think we need do we need, oh, that's the Lambda expression. So that mm -hmm. guy will take the member expression and the parameter expression here and basically mm -hmm. create that Lambda. So this guy here, Sam, is the one that's gonna go and say it, oh. it, that name. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And this guy here, this guy here is just saying. Dollar it, dollar name. Yeah, uh, it, it, dollar name. it, dollar it. Just dollar it. Uh, dollar it, dollar Dollar it, dollar name, yes. This one is the one that says dollar it, right? So this one here is saying it. Yeah, it's, it has a type. You can mm -hmm. use in the parentheses to wrap the. Yeah, with the type, right? So this gives me it, right? So this parameter expression is what goes here. And then the name. So I'm basically saying this dot name. And then again, I want it, uh, fat arrow it dot name. So I take the member expression which is this guy, that's it dot name, and also the parameter expression, which is this guy. You know, I would have put this first though, but I don't know why they made the order. This should have been passed in first because you're saying Yeah, it... because Lambda expression has one body, but it can be has multiple parameters. Ah, so you want to pass okay, multiple. So you can yeah. have multiple um, uh, parameters for one lambda expression mm -hmm. body. Mm -hmm. So, it, mm -hmm. so I think that's the design for the lambda expression uh, method. Okay. Yeah, it yes, has parameters. The body. No, mm -hmm. and the second uh, and so just first, you can input multiple uh, parameters. That's right. That's right. Okay, and and just for 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 people watching, Sam, you know, we basically went and said. Uh, here's a list of students, right? Here's a bunch of students. And the statement that's coming in is select equal name, right? This doesn't matter actually, because we didn't do anything like in here, you know, not used. I'm just gonna do it this way. 
And then I'm going to go and say select statement, you know, get methods, give me the method that select. So out of this enumerable, we found out a select statement and then we compiled that statement. So whatever came from here, which is this statement, this guy here is going to give you basically a, a it, it dot name, just like the, like that. So we basically took that that came back from here, which is the Lambda expression, and we compiled it basically. So we took that select expression, compiled it, it gave us a delegate. A delegate is basically a method, something that takes in parameters, you know, and we basically went and said, hey, give me that select method and pass the collection to it plus the select expression delegate. And it basically executes. So we basically went and said, give me that list and then give me that expression and then get, you know, put these two as parameters to that select method. So if I run my code now, it should give me the results in here. Let's see if we can show people the results. It's, it's probably going to be really slow, uh, small, but, you know, it has Sam and Hassan right here. So this is working. It's doing what it's supposed to. You know, just for people to understand, if I go and put age in here, but Sam is young. Sam is about 25 years old. <laughs> you know? And then Hassan, <laughs> and then Hassan is around 120, right? And yeah. then if I, go, <laughs> if I go and change this to age like this, that basically means, see, this is all I had to change, right? So I'm no, kind of getting... as a line. So oh, that's six. Right, 36. The also return type is int. int. That's right. So this here will go like this and will go like this. And then the results will be, you know, the two and the two has 25. And you guys can see it. But if I do a quick watch in here, you will be able to see this in here. Okay. Okay. So, Sam, here's the deal. Mm -hmm. So for everyone watching, where Sam and I stopped last time was basically around selecting multiple. So we figured out one, we want to do multiple because we're basically evolving with this problem, right? And the problem was to be able to define a new type. And this new type basically will render and express, you know, the values that we want to select. So now we know that the student has an ID and a name and an age. Okay. I want to only have the name and the age, right? I want to only have the name and the age. This name and the age need to be contained in some new type, right? This type, defining this type is where Sam and I stopped last time. And what we're going to try to do today, just, a, just a, a little attempt, you know, to basically go and say, well, now I'm going to enable all of these commented sections. like this, and we're going to think together about finding a solution for that little problem. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be go back to name. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put this back to string. Oh, here. Here we can use in the lambda expression dot body dot type. So we don't need to change it at any time. So hey, nice. change it to using the lambda expression, uh, select expression. Select expression. the body, the type. So okay. that means we always return the uh, body's type. Whatever so that type the, is, I like that. Yeah. So if we if we run this, it's still gonna give us kind of name. Yeah. So if we do this, yeah, I can see it. It works. Perfect, Sam. Love it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now this is generic enough. Now. The last time you and I were talking, we basically said, okay, let's try with our own type for starters, right? We basically went and said, here's a not bad bag. <laughs> and then in here, we basically went and said, what if I had a new type, a completely new strong type, just for, for experimentation? And I basically went and said, here's an age, right? So now if I have the name and the age, uh, where would that type be uh so so in here generic method you have type is this type that you define here is why you pass in for the collection as what or what you return i think it's in here so that would be this guy yeah 
right? So if I, of course, it won't recognize this right away, but let's start from here first. Mm -hmm. In that convert to expression, Sam, mm -hmm. I want to select multiple. Yes. Right. So I have a member expression one and two, lambda expression one and two. How do you concatenate these two together? Yeah, like that's a question. Mm -hmm. So um, as you mentioned last time, maybe we can use in dynamic and mm -hmm. let the compiler to build a, a numeral type on the on the fly. But it seems it's not. Uh, it doesn't uh, recognize dynamic as a type. Like yeah. we go, what is it? So, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Another part is it mm, looks uh, select. It looks like uh, return uh, key value pairs, right? Yes. So yes. key value pairs, so we can think using the dictionary. Yes. Yes. Because every time you select the name age, it's the same as return a uh, key as name, key as age. And the value for name and the value for age. It's Actually, a key value pair, key value pair. Yes. So we can use in dictionary. Yes. Actually, Sam, you're right. Let me just to clarify, if I have class student in here mm -hmm. and it has a public good ID get set and it has a public uh, string name, just to, just to show people, let's see. Like in the in the real world, without having to do anything, uh, to get this to actually work, let's just create this. And then here's var students. I'm gonna copy the one I have in here because the select statement itself. This is a sh the C sharp interactive, right? So this is is this guy. And then just to verify, if I do students in here, yeah, perfect. And now if I want to select only two things, and I go and say select like this it will be student just as <laughs> student name so it will be a new type new right name equal student dot name and age equal student dot age that's one way i can think of an expression like this sam so if i click this now it's selecting see so it's it's skipping the id right but this here is creating a dynamic object on the fly, my dear friend, right? Yes. And that's a problem. I was yeah. wondering, Sam, I was wondering if we could just do like, hang on. If I go and say students hmm. a dot select, student select, and would it just let you do a comma based? For the select it wouldn't would it it wouldn't work would it so let me ask you this in o data as it's implemented today what do you return when you do a select do you return the exact same object but you nullify the properties or what do you return normally what do we return normally yeah in, in o data today like mm -hmm. if i go and say here's a list of students and mm -hmm. then and then in the list of students, I'm basically saying dollar sign, select name, comma, age. What do you return? What's the type of the list that you're returning? So in the real audit web API implementation, mm -hmm. we return a wrap. Uh, we're using a wrap class. Oh, to wrap, wrap class. information together. OK. Uh, okay. Behind the C, it's a, it's a dictionary. It's just a dictionary. It's uh, it looks like a dictionary. It's a key value pairs, and uh, meanwhile, we want to get the information about the original type. So if you return the name age, just using the dictionary, we will lost the original type of student. Yes. Yes. Right. So yeah. in the return in the result type, we don't know the the date. We are return the date. I mean the original type. The original because type. The name yeah. age is from student. It's not from person. It's not from animal. Yeah. Right. So we what? Why do we want the type? Because we want using the type to do some validation and do the serialization mm. to 
to return the JSON payload for the client. So we need the type, uh, original type and the return type. That's right. So and, we and have to build a lot class to host all the things together. That's but right. Here, just for example, mm -hmm. so we can use in the dictionary. Mm -hmm. I tried to use in the expand object, but it cannot work. Uh, so it? Yeah, it can work because uh, uh, what I mean, we, we can build the expression, but we needed to take the EF or EF core or other um, provider tools into mm. consider consideration. Does the does it support for all of these tools? Right, right. Mm. So because expression uh, is useless, we needed to apply the expression to the data source and to return the data. The right. data is, is, is useful for customer, but not the expression. Expression is just help us, help it's the- just an idea of what, yeah, yeah. Help no, us I... build the, the query to execute on the data, database. That's right, that's right. So, so, so we haven't had the chance to experiment with expand or object last time. Do you want to try expand object today? I tried expand object um, before this session, and oh, also okay. it, it, I can't make it work. Okay. But I did have an example to using the dictionary to make it work. Okay, let's do it. Let's uh, see. If you want to try the expand object. So let's do it. If you want to um, to see the exp uh, dictionary version, so I can sh I can do a demo first. It's up to you. So so expand the object is nothing but a dictionary. Let's start with the dictionary, and then we'll try to convert it to expand. Do you want to share your screen and show us? Yeah, let me share something. So you, so you did your you did your homework. You're 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 that kid at school that does his homework. And yeah, comes it's ready. a homework during the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> this this is what I love about this, Sam. You're very passionate about this, and I kind of feed off of that energy. So let's keep that momentum going. We'll see how far we can take it. <laughs> yeah. Um, screen T. Yep. Can you see my screen? Yep, I can see your Windows 11 showing off. Got it. <laughs> there you go. Um, zoom, zoom in a little, Sam. So do control and roll the, the yeah, yeah, there you go. That's it. That's it. That's it. Mm. So I look, uh, select demo. Mm -hmm. So it's similar things. Um, build a, a select expression. Mm -hmm. Okay. So select expression input from the command line and, and, and using the command oh. split it using, yeah, split it. And build a select expression based on the input property. So have the property so it supports name, age, and blah blah. Mm -hmm. And it build the expression is a lambda expression. It's the same as call the property, call the um, lambda expression. Okay. Mm -hmm. But here I using the dictionary to host the object. Yeah. So I call uh, because here you can see the lambda expression like this one is a new dictionary. Yeah, yeah. I also call new to create a new new dictionary. Mm -hmm. And here using the list init. So I have to build the using the list init to list the dictionary. Mm -hmm. And when I finish that, I invoke the select. It's the same as the code we yeah. build in the, so yeah, we make uh, get the in innumerable select method and build the the method using the real type and combine the lambda expression and the call in words on the real source. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I can learn that and we can go to that code detail. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you, Sam. Uh, it's kind of learning. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have the uh, demo to, to demo the select. Yes. So here I want to do something, select something. You can see here's a, here's my date, is the name, yeah. age, and the location. Location yeah. is a complex type. Yeah. Has a city and the street properties. Yeah. yeah. So here I can do say let's return name. 
So, so here, up. this is a lambda expression build. It says A is a parameter, mm -hmm. and let's return a dictionary on the name. So yeah. the is a string, and the value is A dot name. And here's the return result. Nice. So just return the name. Yeah. So I can do some age. Here, uh, it returns the age and the name. Nice. Yeah, so here you can see it's a dictionary again and the result. Okay, so again, I can do uh, return the uh, complex. Mm -hmm. So here to return the uh, primitive, object, yeah. primitive property and the complex property, mm -hmm. right? Here I also can return um, the sub property. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. I just want to return the city belong to the location. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So here now I just return the city properties. Nice. And then meanwhile, I can combine the location and the location city, city. or location street. Nice. Yeah, so here you can see it, it's a little bit complex. So return name, location, you can see here is a difference. A dot yeah. location dot city, A dot yep. location dot street. But the, the, the key, just the street. Just the, the, yeah. Here's nice. the result. Okay. So here's a demo for the select I use in the dictionary. Right. And I check it with the uh, EF Corti. Dictionary yeah. supports the basic scenarios. Yeah. Dictionary supports, uh, I mean, the EF supports the basic scenario of the dictionary. But, but it won't uh, be able to support be problem it. to support the uh any uh element in it so but i mm. in this part i'd like to do more thing yeah uh, to investigate yeah yeah okay here is a code detail uh you can find the code mm. uh, at my personal github uh, web api example repo i will update it later so the code so the difference I think it's a it's the same thing we build at your side, Hassan. Yeah. But it's a little bit complex, right? I also mentioned I split the command using the yeah. uh, colon. Yeah, that's okay. And do I for each, right? I call every um, select to call property something mm -hmm. like this. If if it supports the slash pat, uh, pattern. I separate it to two levels. So far, I only support the two levels. Yeah. So here's yeah, just a call property and the property again. So first call the property, then call the second property. The first property is called like this, a dot location. Yeah. The second property called said a dot location dot city. city. Yeah. Yeah. And but here need because I return the string object. Yep. But uh, for the age. You can see age or not. Age is int type. Yep. Int 32. So yep. we cannot convert the int to object. So in this case, if it's value type, we have to convert the the property into type of object. For oh, any reference type, it's okay. It doesn't okay, recognize so int as an object. Yes. Because yeah. I return a string object. We don't know that the we, because we want to support any type for the yeah, value. That's right. Uh, um, yeah, so just create a member element in it and just uh, using the uh, init elements uh, to do to, to the list in it. Mm -hmm. So here's a lambda expression. So I can, I can want to enlarge that. Yep. Yeah. So this is the version of dictionary, but it's I also as I mentioned, it's not enough for audit to serialize because we want to get the original type. Because from the dictionary, there's no information about the student or the mm -hmm. customer. Mm -hmm. So we need the uh, information to tell the serializer to do a serialization based on the type, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So here's a code and it works fine using dictionary, but it's not enough. Mm -hmm. I just using this demo to illustrate how to 
um, build the uh, multiple properties, how to build the uh, uh, multiple la levels properties, for example, a location slash city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so let's let use that using the expand ob or object. Expand or object, that's right. So, yeah. so push this somewhere, I'll pull it down and let's see if we can play around with expand or, or do you want to do it on your side? Uh, I push everything into okay. my personal rep GitHub repo. Okay, let's go find the personal repo then. Here is yeah, uh, I haven't uploaded to the changes. Let me do that. Okay. Um, Let's see, Sam. Wait um, on. Yeah. Add the select demo. Hmm. What did you call your repo, Sam? Um. Yeah, you can find here. Let me see. Um. Can you go to? Um, yep, I'm I'm taking the screen. Okay. Yeah. I'm at, I'm at your repo here. I'll go to the baby pair sample. Okay, let's see. Web so API. Yeah, that guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, find the uh, prop oh. to order the curly link expression build. Oh, the link to expression build. Yeah. Yeah. So go to that. That guy. Yeah. We have a select on the demo. And you can build and run. And because this demo just demo two, two scenarios, one is for the dollar select, and another one is dollar filter. So dollar filter is, is my previous. Oh, you did the filter too? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to demo the select, you can uh, input the S. If you want to demo the filter, you put the F at the first command line. Okay, let yeah. me, how do we do this? So you have everything in this one repo. Nice, Sam, nice. <laughs> Let's That's see. for the a sample, sample demo. Yeah, it won't let me. I'm going to have to pull everything, right? So let's see. Uh, open with Visual Studio. I think I have your, I think I have this project of yours somewhere already, but. Let me pull that down and let's get to the just a moment, Sam. Did I stop sharing? You didn't. I'm back to you here. This is your oh, screen. Let yeah. me stop. So I finished my code. You're, so you're, you're, if you don't want to get the code, you uh, can go to the repo. But okay. uh, here we want to finish the discussion about the expand all object. Similarly. Yes. Or maybe we can build a class to wrap the return. Yeah, so you called it OData uh, Expression Builder. Let's see here, Sam. OData Query Link Builder. Link Expression the, Query Link. There it is. Mm -hmm. Found it. OK, my friend. Let's see here. So this is this guy. This is the program. <clears throat> um. I, did you build it in like .NET Framework or something, Sam? Is that what it is? Hmm? Yeah, it's an older one. Is this a... No, it's .NET 5. 5. I think I do have 5. Let's see. Okay. So you let me can, you can update it to the .NET 6. Yeah, I'll just upgrade it to 6. But okay. uh, let's see here. Uh, this is... So this is what I see here. Because my screen is, uh, is widescreen, I can't share the pop-up, but uh, play select using. Yeah, I have two demos. Oh, yeah. Oh, because of the query. OK. So if I go you, say... you can try to use the query, <laughs> you can use tab F. Nice. Nice, Sam. OK, so so let, let's try this. So I have this working. Thank you for this. Uh, let's go back here. And then in the program itself, in where you decided to let me increase the font here for people a little bit um this is for the filter because solely for the ugly code organization <laughs> no, no worries brother I, you uh, know if you want to play the select so everything is a select select demo okay let's see i'm trying to kind of 
Print, get model, parse, invoke. So that's for the filter. I'll select demo. I see what yeah. you're saying. Yes, Sam. Yeah. So you used a dictionary here, my friend. I wonder mm -hmm. if it would let us. So oh, new expression. Uh, expand to new. Mm -hmm. Expression dot new. And I know you tried some of this type of expando object. Because expando object might be much easier for the um, entity framework to work with. We don't know yet. We're going to have to go talk to Jeremy Lickness. Who's, who's your guy on the entity framework? I know Arthur, I know Shy, and I know Jeremy. <laughs> These three people. I think there's also a fourth one. I don't remember. There's a guy that doesn't like to go on their uh, stand-up, you know, but he's very smart. I think his name is Paul or something. Maybe, maybe, maybe I forgot the name. But anyway, uh, let's see. So in, in here, you basically said expando init. Expression init. Element init. Element init. Or, or member init. But I haven't tried that. Okay, hey, let's try it. We'll try it. Yeah. <laughs> so this is expando new. And then what is inits, uh, Sam? Inits is... A list. But expand all object is not a list. It's it's not. It's it's a diction it's a dictionary hiding. How do I explain this? So if you go and say expando object expando equal new expando object like this, you can actually go and say expando in name equals Sam. Yeah, but what we are how was it? What How's... we are, what we are the compiler call for this uh, expression. What's so the it compiler looks like uh, uh, oh. the, the dictionary uh, setting, but what's That's... behind, what call, what method call behind the scene? Right. So look at this. If I do expando, and this is var expando dictionary, you still have to convert it to a dictionary mm -hmm. like this. Some, something like that. Let's see. Expando dictionary equal. And then was it dictionary? Dictionary is a generic type. Yeah, I think it was I dictionary. Just a second. So this Maybe is... I dictionary needed two type. The key type and the value type. So you, you maybe you can use in the string and the object here. The the idea is not to give it a type though, but I guess you're right. You're right. So this is dictionary string. And it won't work with the end, Sam. That's the problem. Spando. Let's see if it's happy this way. Yeah. And then if I go and say expando dictionary at element name equals sam now if i go and say expando dot name like this it should give me sam oh expando. expando dictionary no i want to extract i want to get oh because i defined this wrong Which so dynamic find? expando two i'll tell you new expando object and then i want to go and say expando dictionary to equal and then this is i dictionary string string and an object right and i'm basically going and saying expando two right so now i can go and say expando dictionary two uh name equals sam and then i can go now and say expando two dot name expando two dot name the so it has to be defined as dynamic even if you're instantiating it as an expando object, which is also a problem. Because dynamic meaning that it won't recognize the type. If I go here and say type of expando2, expando2.getType, I don't think it will even let me. Let's see. Uh, well, I guess it, 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 it understands it. So this should be OK, right? So now, in your case here, that would look something like this. It would be, 
uh, element, init, expander, new. So first of all, explain to me what these inits are. You're adding an element. Oh, you're iterating over every property. Mm -hmm. Property axis. Yes. If the lens is more than one. And then either way, go and say init element. This init element is for the property name and the property axis. Okay. So that's basically the properties. And it's coming in as what? As a list. Yeah. Of... So remember init, we are called a method on on the type. Yeah. So so suppose you want to I also list the information, right? Yes. Um uh scroll down. Mm -hmm. So here's a uh, comment line one two one zero two. Yeah, uh -huh. one zero two. Yeah, you can see uh, this is your C sharp code. Yeah. Yeah. You create a dictionary, string object, and uh, if you finish the constructor, you're using the open parentheses and the uh, semicolon to finish the expression. It means to create a dictionary object. But here. You want to let the compiler finish the member in it. So you say, <clears throat> let's create the dictionary. Meanwhile, to create properties, uh, to create items for the dictionary. Right. So, so here we're using the curly bricks, curly bricks to wrap the members items for the dictionary. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. So here is a, the, this is a C sharp syntax. But yep. behind the scene, the compiler will call the code, the me uh, methods on the dictionary. Mm -hmm. So here it means let's finish the dictionary constructor. Meanwhile, using the return type, return object to call the add method. And for each items you want to add. So here's yep. the call the add using the first parameter is a name, the mm -hmm. second parameter is a dot. A name, yeah. Right? So the element in it here is just call the add method. So mm -hmm. here's a line nine ninety. So element in it give me the method name that you want to call. Yep. The so second uh... thing is the second thing is the parameter for the add method. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, if you want to call the add method? Okay, the the first parameter is a is a string type. Okay, what's a string? Okay, it's a uh, constant because you're using the uh, property name. And the second, what's the second parameter? Second is a property access. Yeah. Here's a member in it, element in it. So we, maybe you can do the same thing to expand all object, but we, under, we have to understand what best should it call for the expand all object. So, so two things, just just two things, for, because it's almost time for our session. But two things I want to press on. Somehow, Sam, we need to convert this expand to object on the fly to a dictionary. Mm. On the fly. Mm. So that means that let's see, is there a cast option? in here let's see share let's do this sam so can i go here and say expression dot cast or convert oh, oh there is convert yeah okay but we also like this also is wrong like this here is saying expand to object Object equal new expand to object. That's not what we want to do. Hmm. You want to go and say dynamic, dynamic expando or obj equal new expando object like this. Hmm. This is the statement that this guy, this guy is not doing that. I wonder new. Okay, I wonder if this guy takes parameters. Uh, this is a constructor arguments construct solution. parameter. So, you, so you, oh, you yeah, construct that's... accept the parameter. You have to provide the uh, pro parameters. But is the... there a way like control shift? What is it? Control space. Uh, let's see, control space. 
Control shift space. There you go. So this guy takes a type constructor, constructor with arguments, member info. Yeah, I don't think. <laughs> excuse me, Sam. I don't think this guy hmm? knows how to do this statement. You see this statement in here: dynamic object equal new expand to object. So that you understand how to understand the uh, process of the compiler. Mm -hmm. So suppose suppose you are the compiler. When you meet, meet when you meet this line this line code, what does it mean? When, so when here it means it's not only one step. It's two steps. It's two step, right? Yeah. The first is construct the object, build the object uh, in the memory. Mm -hmm and uh, return uh, a reference or address for the object mm -hmm. and save that into object uh, into the into your mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. here we also want to convert or do something uh, to convert to using a dynamic type mm -hmm. to reference object so it, it could be using the convert to do the same thing let's, let's try the convert we need to make sure expression understands the type of dynamic, but it's that dynamic is not a type. That's the problem. If I go dynamic and do this, not a type. <laughs> if I do this, it'll be like, nope, I can't do that. Yeah, dynamic is not a type. What type is dynamic? It says, it's same as, what's the animal of the animal? <laughs> what's the shape? What's the, like, we don't have the animal. It's animal. like what's the type we of have the type? dog? Dog is an animal, but we don't have animal called animal. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing, I think. Um, so and another thing is I also mentioned we need the the need a, a method or need a place to tell the serializer or any other uh, uh, I mean the coming step to understand the source type. Right. Uh, what's the, the original source type that we do the select? Because keep in mind, select is just one query option. Yeah. We have other op options, for example, dollar filter and the dollar expand, the dollar dollar top, or something like this. Maybe we have more uh, will be added in the audit spec. We don't. Who knows? So uh, we need to tell the the remaining part. Right, the type, only the type. So, so I'll tell you something, Sam. A couple, a couple of things for you and me to look into, and then maybe we can connect tomorrow or Wednesday. Um, we need to be able to express this dynamic object equal new expand to object. It's not just that, and we might come up with our own. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. Maybe, your, maybe your wrapper idea is not too bad. You know. I mean, it's it's running the world at this moment in time. And then we still want to be able to go and say, you know, I dictionary of a string and an object, right? And this whole guy is wrapping up around obj so we can add things to it. And then we get to that state where you are doing exactly these things, list in it and all that. I'll try a couple of things. You try a couple of things. I'll ping you tomorrow if you're available. If not, it's going to be on Wednesday because we need to catch up. We need to get something out the door. So, um, and I apologize for, for the delay. It was a little bit under the weather, so I couldn't really do it. But, um, you know, I think at least we have a specific problem to solve. And we can go from there. Sounds good, my dear friend. I'm okay. Tomorrow we talk. Tomorrow? tomorrow tomorrow morning is busy every tomorrow uh, tuesday morning is busy for Wednesday. for charge meeting other meetings and tomorrow afternoon one so maybe tomorrow afternoon after 3 p.m <clears throat> i'll ping you after 3 p.m thank you so much sam i appreciate you you're a very good brother okay We'll talk mm -hmm. to you later. For people watching us, you know, stay with us. If you have some ideas and some options, feel free to drop in the comment sections. And, you know, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later. Thank you, Sam. Bye. Bye. -bye.